Hey there, Royal Warriors. I hope you're all having a fantastic day again today. Welcome to another episode of Untold Royal Secrets. This is your royal boy, Ben, back here with fascinating insiders you don't want to miss. So grab your tea and settle in because today we're diving deep into the latest royal drama that's got everyone talking, and boy, do I mean everyone. So now, let me tell you something. I've been covering the royal family for years, and I've never seen anything quite like what's unfolding right now. Our beloved King Charles, who has shown nothing but patience and dignity throughout this entire saga, has finally reached his breaking point. And honestly, who can blame him? You know, I remember when Harry was that cheeky, lovable prince who brought smiles to everyone's faces. Now, he's become nothing more than a mouthpiece for his wife's calculated agenda. It breaks my heart, it really does. Um, I used to adore watching him interact with William and Catherine, seeing that genuine brotherly bond. Those were the days, weren't they? Uh, speaking of Catherine, let's take a moment to appreciate how she's handled everything with such grace. While certain people who shall not be named are busy plotting their next media circus, she's quietly getting on with her royal duties, supporting her husband, and being an exemplary mother to their beautiful children. That's what real dignity looks like, folks. Now, let's talk about this latest development. According to reports, Harry's supposedly ready to tell the truth again. Again? Really? How many truths does one person need to tell? I mean, we've had the Oprah interview, that Netflix series Spare, and countless other interviews. What's left? The color of the Queen's favorite tea cozy. You know what really gets me? The timing of all this. Just when the working royals are focusing on important charitable causes, just when King Charles is making significant environmental strides, just when Princess Catherine is launching meaningful initiatives for early childhood development, boom! Another Harry and Meghan publicity stunt. Let me share something personal with you all. I have a friend who, like Harry, married someone who gradually isolated them from their family. It's heartbreaking to watch from the outside, seeing someone you care about being manipulated and turned against their own flesh and blood. That's exactly what we're witnessing with Harry, but on a global stage. And this latest threat, it's classic narcissistic behavior. When things get quiet, when people stop paying attention, they need to create drama. It's like clockwork. But here's what they don't understand. The British public isn't buying it anymore. We see through the facade. Remember when Meghan claimed she never Googled Harry or the royal family, then proceeded to perfectly curtsy to the late Queen Elizabeth in that mocking way during the Oprah interview? The contradictions are endless, my friends. King Charles has been more than generous. He's extended olive branch after olive branch. He even mentioned his love for Harry and Meghan in his first speech as king. But there's only so much one father can take. The man who has waited longer than any heir in British history to become king, who has dedicated his entire life to service, who has revolutionized environmental advocacy long before it was fashionable, he deserves better than this. And let's talk about Prince William for a moment. While his younger brother is off in Montecito playing victim, William has stepped up magnificently. He's everything we could hope for in a future king. Dedicated, dignified, and determined to modernize the monarchy while respecting its traditions. The contrast couldn't be more stark. You know what's particularly rich about this whole situation? Harry and Meghan claim they left for privacy, yet they can't seem to stop putting themselves in the spotlight. They're not interested in privacy. They're interested in controlling the narrative. There's a big difference. No. Do you remember the good old days when Harry was truly happy, when he was doing his military service, when he created the Invictus Games, when he was the fun uncle to George, Charlotte, and Lewis? That Harry seems long gone, replaced by this perpetually angry, confused man who appears to be reading from a script written by someone else. And speaking of scripts, let's discuss this new truth-telling mission. What truth hasn't been told yet? They've accused the royal family of racism, claimed they were cut off financially despite evidence to the contrary, and suggested they were practically imprisoned in a gilded cage. What's left? Are they going to claim the corgis were actually robots? The most frustrating part is watching how this affects the real working royals. While Harry and Meghan are living their best life in California, making Netflix deals and giving paid speeches, the rest of the family is quietly getting on with their duties. Queen Camilla, who's been absolutely wonderful in supporting King Charles, never complains about the constant barrage of criticism from these two. 
Let me tell you something about the reality of royal life that Harry seems to have forgotten. It's not about fame or fortune. It's about duty, service, and putting the needs of the nation above your own. Something his grandfather, Prince Philip, understood perfectly. The late Duke of Edinburgh served for over seven decades without ever making it about himself. And can we talk about the timing of these threats? Just when the royal family is dealing with important state matters, just when they're trying to focus on their charitable work, here comes another attention-seeking missile from Montecito. It's becoming predictable, isn't it? I've spoken to numerous royal sources over the years, and they all say the same thing. The Harry they knew would never have behaved this way. He understood the importance of unity, of family, of duty. But that Harry seems to have vanished the moment he met his current wife. You know what's particularly sad? The way they've treated their own family members. Think about it. Meghan's father, Thomas Markle, hasn't even met his grandchildren. And now Harry's doing the same thing to his own father and brother. It's a pattern, folks, and it's not a pretty one. Let's be real here. This isn't about truth-telling. This is about maintaining relevance in Hollywood. Because, let's face it, without the royal connection, what do they really have to offer? Their Netflix content has been mediocre at best. Their Spotify deal went up in flames and their foundation. Well, let's not even go there. The contrast between the two brothers couldn't be more striking. While William and Catherine are raising their children to understand their roles and responsibilities, teaching them about service and duty, Harry and Meghan are using their children as pawns in their publicity games. Remember the drama about titles, about security? It never ends. And here's something that really gets to me, the way they've treated the late Queen Elizabeth's legacy, this great woman who dedicated her entire life to service, who was the epitome of dignity and duty, spent her final years dealing with this unnecessary drama. Instead of being able to enjoy her great-grandchildren, she had to manage a constant stream of public attacks from her own grandson. King Charles has shown remarkable restraint throughout all of this, but even the most patient father has his limits. And frankly, I don't blame him for finally showing some anger. Sometimes enough is simply enough. What's particularly interesting about this latest development is the timing. Just when the working royals are receiving positive press for their genuine humanitarian efforts, just when Catherine's early years project is gaining significant traction, just when King Charles is making important diplomatic moves, Suddenly, there's another threat of truth-telling from California. The British public isn't stupid. We can see exactly what's happening here. Every time the spotlight shifts away from Montecito, there's another dramatic announcement, another threat, another truth that needs to be told. It's becoming so transparent it would be laughable if it wasn't so sad. You know what really gets me? The way they've treated the institution of monarchy itself, this isn't just about family drama. This is about an institution that has served as a stabilizing force in British society for centuries. An institution that both Harry and Meghan benefited from enormously, by the way. And let's talk about the hypocrisy for a moment. They claim to hate the media intrusion, yet they're constantly feeding the media machine. They say they want privacy, yet they're selling their story to anyone who'll listen. They criticize the institution of monarchy while desperately clinging to their titles and using them for profit. The saddest part is watching Harry become increasingly isolated from his family. This is the same family that supported him through his difficult teenage years after losing his mother. The same family that celebrated his military achievements. The same family that welcomed his wife with open arms, despite what certain people might claim. Remember the wedding? The late queen made unprecedented exceptions to protocol to accommodate Meghan. Prince Charles walked her down the aisle when her own father couldn't attend. William was the supportive best man. The British public celebrated with genuine joy. And how has all that goodwill been repaid? With constant attacks, with threats, with truth-telling that seems more about settling scores than actual truth. It's exhausting, isn't it? And I think that's exactly how King Charles feels. Exhausted by the constant drama, the endless threats, the continuous attempts to undermine the institution he's dedicated his life to. But here's what gives me hope, the strength and unity of the working royals. Watch how William and Catherine carry themselves, how they focus on their duties despite the chaos. Look at how King Charles and Queen Camilla continue their work with dignity and determination. That's real nobility, folks. And the British public sees it. We see who's actually doing the work, who's making a real difference. 
and who's just creating drama for publicity. The contrast couldn't be clearer. You know what I find particularly telling? The way Harry and Meghan's followers always claim they're speaking their truth. But truth isn't subjective. It's not something you own. It's not something you can manipulate for publicity. Truth is truth. And the truth is this latest threat from Harry and Meghan is just another attempt to stay relevant, to maintain their position in the spotlight, to keep the drama going because without it, what do they really have? King Charles's reported anger is completely understandable. Any father would be at their wit's end after enduring years of public attacks from their own child. The fact that he's maintained his dignity for so long is a testament to his character. What we're seeing now is the natural conclusion of years of manipulation and calculated moves. The royal family has reached its limit with the constant threats and drama. And honestly, good for them. Sometimes you have to say enough is enough. And to all my loyal viewers out there, I want to thank you for staying with me through this long discussion. Your support means everything, and I know we all share the same hope that someday, somehow, Harry will wake up and realize what he's lost. But until then, we'll continue to support our working royals, the ones who understand what duty, service, and dignity really mean. Remember to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. How do you feel about this latest development? Do you think King Charles was right to finally show his anger? Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay royal, my friends. Peace out.